sixth grade. I was told to not start this lesson with, hey, sixth grade. So I'm not starting it that way. So hi, sixth grade. This is lesson 34. Um, we are talking about Zacchaeus. Who was Zacchaeus? And you might remember a little tiny song from Sunday school. Zacchaeus was a wee little man. And a wee little man was he. I know. I know. Little guy. And it's easy to make fun of the little guy, thinking about who he was. But let's go ahead and get into the lesson, because that's the best way to kind of dive into this one. Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector. He most likely bid for the right to collect taxes for the Rotherham government. So that's right. He was an Israelite. He was somebody who knew and feared God. However, he bid money. He was wealthy enough, but he bid money so that he could have the right to collect taxes from his own people. Why might you do such a thing? Why would you want to bid, pay money to get a specific job? Well, see, the thing is, the Roman government, they just cared about how much money they were going to get. And they didn't care how they got it, who collected, who gave it to them, so long as they got the right amount of money. Now, if you, let's just say, I was in charge of collecting your school tuition for going to St. John's. And let's just say tuition was, oh, $5 million a day. So you're paying your tuition for $5 million a day. Let's just face it, your teachers are that awesome. Um, but all that the school and church really cares about is getting $5 million a day from each one of you. Now, I, as a tax collector, I paid to get the job. I'm the person who's supposed to collect tuition from you. But I tell you all, you actually, you know what? The, the tuition went up, actually. Yeah, and it's actually uh, $8 million per per day. So, yeah, pay up. And if you didn't pay up, I could, because I was working for the Roman government, I could have a soldier come and take stuff from you. So you just most likely had to pay me whatever I said the amount was. There was no way you could go and check. You would just have to pay me the $8 million and I could get $3 million a day outside from the amount of money that Rome actually pays me for being the tax collector. So the tax collectors, that's why you understand why they are referred to in the Bible as amongst with the sinners and despised people. They don't like them. So anyways, in the eyes of his fellow Jews, he was a sellout, like I'd kind of discussed. Not only had he agreed to work for the enemy, Rome, um, but he had also had been given a legal license to steal from his own people. A tax collector was in a position Jewish parents held up to their children as a fate they would not want for them. You know, how your parents say, you know what? I can't wait till you grow up and you become a successful French fry cook at McDonald's. It'll make us so proud to get those fries perfectly crisp and golden. We just can't wait until you achieve that future career. No, no parents don't really do that. Just the same as back then, Jewish parents are like, I can't, I hope you become a tax collector when you grow up. It's a great profession. No, they didn't like him. So we see Jesus. He is walking up, okay? to Jericho on his way to Jerusalem right before what, what is now known as Palm Sunday. And that's actually coming up here, April 5th. The people were, were thrilled that Jesus was coming to their town. They'd heard so much about him, and there were miracles he had done. No, no wonder the people were lining up in the streets. There was a huge crowd presented a problem for Zacchaeus. See, Zacchaeus, he was short. Yeah, trying to get up, trying to see over the top. Not quite making it. Trying everything he can to get up there, but uh, Zacchaeus wasn't going to make that leap. So anyways, Zacchaeus took measures into his own hands. Now this is considered very undignified. Um, and undignified as his behavior might have seemed, he climbed a tree. A grown man climbing a tree. Tree climbing is for little kids, not grown men, but Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. Jesus was that important. He was that amazing. Zacchaeus may have been surprised when Jesus, uh, out of the whole crowd that was there gathered around, sought him out, saw him up in the tree, okay? And uh, the next thing that happened was he invited himself to Zacchaeus' house. And Zacchaeus wasn't the only one who was really surprised. A lot of people are like, wait, out of all these people in this town, there's good people here. You want to go to that dude's house? 
I thought you were a prophet. I thought you knew everything. Don't you know what this guy does? He steals from us. He's not cool. The crowd grumbled over the Jesus' choice and person of the person to honor with his presence. But this wasn't the first time Jesus had heard people grumble about his choice of dinner companions. See, Jesus knew uh, what he was doing. He could see the crowd. He could see what the crowd could not. Jesus was a person who was lost and needed to be found. Um, Jesus saw a person who was lost and needed to be found. Well, we know that Zacchaeus was more than grateful for Jesus' recognition. Zacchaeus openly and joyfully changed his life to honor his Savior. Um, he promised to give half his possessions to the poor and restore four times as the amount as those he had defrauded. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, stop for a second. Stop and think about that. Remember the example we used before. If I was collecting tuition from you guys, and your tuition was $5 million a day, but I told you it was $8 million, so I'm pocketing $3 million a day from each of you. Now, when Jesus just invited himself over and said, Zacchaeus, you're a sinful man. You need to turn from your ways. No. All he just said is, hey, I'd like to come to your house today for dinner. People are like, oh, well, what's... Why, why, why would he go over to that person's house? And then when he invites himself over, Zacchaeus says, hey, you know what? I'm going to give half my possessions to the poor, and if I've cheated anyone out of the amount of any amount of money, I'm going to pay them back four times any amount that I had cheated you from. So think about that. So let's just say one school week, okay? Five days. So for five days, I cheated you out of $3 million every day, so three times five, that would be what? $15 million. So when Jesus invites himself over to my house, I said, okay, well, if I've cheated anybody out of money, then I'm going to pay them back four times what I stole from them. Think about that. So I'd have to give you back, I'd be promising and happy to give you back $40 million for every week I was cheating you out of tuition money. Does that seem like it would do very well for my pocketbook? Does it seem like Zacchaeus cared at that point, did he? Only they knew is that Jesus, this big important person, God walking around in sandals, <laughs> was coming to his house. Now, going down to the review questions, the review definitions down below, let's go to the first one. Uh, the first definition is defraud. If you look at defraud, oh, my Everything is not coming over, but that's okay. Hopefully this video doesn't pause up on me too much. Uh, defraud means to cheat or commit fraud. Uh, as we see here from Merriam-Webster, to deprive of something by deception or fraud. That is what Zacchaeus and most tax collectors of that day did. They did it to get wealthy. They didn't care that other people didn't like them. Hey, they could afford the night nice stuff. What do they need people for? Well, all of you at home right now, under quarantine and things like that, you guys know how valuable it is to have people around you. Um, being lonely and being tired of um, being cooped up in the same old place ah, gets a little nerve-wracking after a while. The next definition would be repent. Now, Mary Webster says to turn from sin and dedicate oneself to the amendment of life. Um, we could put to regret and turn from sin to regret and turn from sin. I think that's a good way to put it. Uh, the last one, discernment. Maybe you haven't heard of this word before. Um, the quality of being able to grasp and comprehend what is obscure. Hmm. Um, to distinguish or comprehend a difference. If you can tell the difference between right and wrong, if you Oh, gosh, this will date me. But if your parents are listening at all, they'll understand that Sesame Street song when they said, one of these things just isn't like the other. One of these things just isn't the same. That's discernment. Didn't realize that Sesame Street was teaching you those sorts of things. Now, the next page. Thinking about the gifts that Zacchaeus had. If he had the gifts of money management and learning about all sorts of different things, Things and being able to organize and count and good at math and things like that. There's lots of things Zacchaeus was good at, but he misused his gifts. He used his gifts to make himself rich. He used, used it to help other people from getting to the poorhouse, from helping other people to figure out what they need to do. 
See, God had endowed Zacchaeus with many blessings. Height wasn't one of them. And the poor little puppy. Not quite tall enough. Okay. But Zacchaeus obviously had a talent for business and had been given much wealth. What Zacchaeus did, did with those gifts um, that God had given to him, however, was not pleasing God. Guess what? God knew how Zacchaeus was using those gifts. Though Jesus was visiting Jericho, he gave Zacchaeus an opportunity to see Jesus. God, and Jesus didn't just pass there through accident. He meant to go there specifically so he could see Zacchaeus and get him to use his gifts a different way. Now, start to think about this. What gifts has God given you, sixth grade? Um, what are you doing with those gifts that God has given you? Here's an example. Do you like to talk, socialize with other people? Uh, have you ever thought about just communicating with people as being a gift from God if you're somebody who's easy to talk to other people? Um, are you good at encouraging other people? Okay. Are you comforting someone who is in need of a caring word? Are you sharing others' joy or praising someone's accomplishment? Or are you using words to hurt or belittle someone? Are you sharing information that could be shared? or using language and images that you know would wound God's heart. There's lots of different gifts that we can use. I mean, if you're a person who's funny, if you if you can make other people laugh, there's ways that you can misuse it, right? Yeah. You could be giving somebody a hard time. You could make be making fun of somebody. You could be doing all sorts of different things that aren't okay with that gift. Or, man, if you're able to make somebody laugh, my favorite comedians are some, what people call clean comedians. And it's not just because they don't curse, but it's because they tend to be able to make fun of things and laugh at things without bringing other people down. They're using their gift in a God-pleasing way. Now, keep in mind, at the top of the next page, you need to list five gifts and talents which God has blessed you with. You're like, oh, I don't think I have five. Yes, you do. One of the benefits of you being able to do this uh, um, assignment at home right now is talk to mom, talk to dad. They're going to be able to tell you, uh, oh, you're going to have to slow them down because of how many different gifts you have. Keep in mind, being quiet and being a good listener, if you're a person who's just kind of quiet, stays in the corner, just listens very well, good listening, be able to hold your tongue, those are good gifts. You could misuse them. But using them for God could just mean listening to people who are having a hard day. Um, obviously, if you're funny, if you if you if you're an athlete, you're like, well, how do I use playing basketball as something to lead people towards God and pleasing God? You know, believe it or not, there's lots of different ways that you can do that, and I want you to think about different ways that you can praise God first rather than yourself. Lift up your teammates. Encourage others who aren't good at basketball. Teach them the things that you know, things that you're good at. There's all sorts of different ways you can do it. So that's the next part is think about how you could use those gifts and talents to serve God. If you are doing this assignment uh, on Google Classroom, you're like, I have the gift of this. How can I use that for God? Talk to me, people. This is what I do. This is what I like to do. I like to make sure that youth aren't just sitting in the sides being quiet and listening to the sermon. There's stuff for you to do at church. We need you. When It's not just, well, we can use you for this. No, no, no. It's better when people see you do it. Because all, some of those adults that are, don't really want to do much in the church, they just want to show up for an hour and a half on Sunday morning and then go home. That's okay sometimes. But you know what? God gave you gifts to use for the church, for other people coming to church. I bet you he can use them to lead somebody to him and save them from, and give them eternal life, I mean not save them from, but give them eternal life. It's an awesome thing to think about. Last but not least, sometimes we misuse blessings that God has given us. Oh, let's go back to the minions. Why don't we? There they are again. We misuse the gifts that God has given us. Uh, write a prayer confessing how you've misused his gifts in your prayer. Thank God for the forgiveness that is yours in Jesus. Also, tell how you plan to change and ask God for the strength to follow through with your prayer. That's an awesome thing. Sixth grade, thank you for joining me for this lesson. Uh, hope everything's going well. As always, make sure that you write some questions uh, if you have any, and I'll be glad to get back to them. I'm always available during email. If there's talk about stuff that's going on, uh, you can ask me, write me an email, and we can set up a Google Hangout sometime, and we can just kind of chat together. That's what we would like to do. Um, 
Hope everything's going well, guys. Oh, I'm trying to figure out how to stop this video. Doink. <laughs>